following lesson is linked to learning outcome two, reading and viewing. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to demonstrate various reading and viewing strategies for comprehension and appreciation. Becky and today we'll be starting a new series called Reading to Comprehend. This series of lessons will help you to improve your results in comprehension tests in English and will also help you to read with understanding in your other school subjects. Even though once you have left school, you will probably never again be faced with a passage and questions, you will still want to read books, magazines and newspapers and be able to understand not just the written words but what the writer is trying to say. In the workplace, it's also important for you to be able to comprehend, as you will be able to read reports, manuals, and documents, and understand the information that they are conveying. So the skills of comprehending texts will never be wasted. Let's see what the outcomes are for today's lesson. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define comprehension, Identify different features of a text. Survey a text. In the course of our lessons on reading to comprehend, I'll be using many words that you will need to understand to benefit from the lessons. As I introduce you to the words, you may want to write them and their definitions down. In fact, it's a good idea to keep a list of new words that you come into contact with. It will improve your writing too. The first word is comprehension. Let's look at the definition. Comprehension means understanding. To comprehend something means to understand something, to make meaning of it. Sometimes we understand what the words mean, but in order to really comprehend, we need to understand the passage or situation as a whole. Have a look at these two situations and see if you can comprehend what is happening. In both those situations, the word hi was exactly the same. We know that it means hello, but there was a bit more than just a greeting going on in the second situation. In the first situation, the girl was simply saying hi to her friend, but in the second situation, she seemed as if she was flirting. We wonder if the boy was her boyfriend or if she would like him to be. We were able to work out what was going on from all the other clues, apart from the word hi, such as the girl's body language, facial expression, and tone of voice. And by doing this, we did not just understand what was said, we comprehended her whole message. But it is different and harder when you do not have tone of voice or facial expressions to help you work out the meaning. In your tests and exams at school, you will only have the words to go by, the written text. So, in these lessons, we will be concentrating on comprehension skills that are needed to understand written texts. What is a text? When you read an article, you are reading a text. When you write a letter, you are creating a text. A text is a passage of language or something else, such as a picture that we can make meaning from. We refer to a book as a text, but we could also call a short extract from the book a text. A poem, a recipe, a newspaper article, a bus timetable, or an advertisement are all various kinds of written texts. A speech is an example of an oral text. So where do we start? When you are trying to comprehend a text, a good place to start is knowing what type of text you are trying to decode. This is important because different types of texts are associated with different styles of writing and different purposes. For example, let's have a look at some of the different types of texts that are in this newspaper. Here is a political cartoon that is found in the editorial section of the newspaper. It is making fun of a recent event in the news and is trying to get me to think about the situation it is showing. 
It is quite different to these cartoons in the magazine section. These are for fun and they are meant to be entertaining and not serious. And here is the front page of the newspaper. I know that I'm likely to find lots of facts as these news articles are meant to be informative. This is the bit of newspaper that I really like. It contains the film reviews. I know that here I can find reviewers' opinions of films and it will help you to decide what film to go see on the weekend. When we are trying to comprehend or understand a text, it's very helpful to know what type of text you're looking at because you will then know what style of language to expect and what the purpose of the writing was. But what about in a test or exam? When you are given a photocopy of a text, how do you work out where it comes from? If it is from a newspaper or a novel or an advert? Even before you start reading, there are places other than text where you can gain information about the text. For example, the first place you can look at is the source of your passage. This is often typed in under the passage or the question will say something like, Read the following extract taken from Bryce Courtenay's novel, The Power of One. From here, you can get a sense of the type of text you are dealing with. In this example, the extract is taken from a novel, so we would expect something fictional and for entertainment rather than something containing lots of facts. Also, look at the title of the article or the title of a book. This will already give you an idea of what you are dealing with. Have a look at these titles of books and see if you can work out what type of language the book would contain and what the book's purpose would be just from the title. First up we have the Oxford Book of Humorous Prose. Going on to our second book which is Illustrated History of South Africa which takes us to our third book which is Getaway's Top 10 and then finally we have the best of South African short stories. I'm sure you were able to guess which one of those books would be funny and which would be serious, which would be full of facts and which would be fiction, just from their titles. In addition to the words in the title and headline, there may be a picture and a caption which will help you out. What is a caption? A caption is the writing that goes with a picture, usually underneath it. Here is a picture and a caption that's on the front page of my newspaper. The heading above this picture reads, Phrase that. And the caption says, Oh, what a wonderful feeling. And you can see it right there on the bottom. We don't even have to read the article to work out that this story will be something about rugby and a team that has won an important game. We can already tell this just from looking at the picture and by reading the caption. Apart from looking at the headings and pictures, an article may also include information written in bold type. These subheadings or other pieces of information are designed to stand out because they are very important. So reading them will give you clues about the passage. <laughs> Newspaper articles may also include graphs or tables of statistics. Scanning your eye over these will also give you clues about what the text is about. You can also run your eye over the passage and look out for the topic sentences. Each paragraph usually begins with a topic sentence. A topic sentence is a sentence that sums up what the paragraph is about. Just reading the first sentence of every paragraph would give you quite a good idea of what the article or passage was about. As we have seen, you can get clues about a text from the source, where it is taken from, the title of the book or article, the pictures, the captions, bold type, graphs and charts before we even start to read the text. And then just by reading the topic sentences, we can get even more clues. Looking at the text carefully before we read is an important part of comprehending it as it helps us to work out its context. Considering all the clues we have about the text is known as surveying the text. Some learners think that surveying the text wastes time, but it's like going on a trip. If you set off on a journey, the sensible thing to do would be to survey your route. You find out how long the journey will be, what places you would pass through, where you could stop for petrol and for food. 
This preparation before starting on your journey would make your journey more manageable. Similarly, surveying an article before reading it makes the article easier to understand. Let's look at the definition of survey. A survey is an inspection or general view. Surveying is an important technique in reading for comprehension, particularly when you study. When you read a novel for pleasure, you don't really need to survey it. But whenever you read for study purposes, a survey of your article will definitely help you. The survey will allow you to read with an active mind and to be prepared for what you will find in the text. So let's recap on what the survey involves. The survey involves scanning aspects of the passage or text you're given before reading it and looking at and thinking about the source, the title, heading or headline, pictures, captions, bold type, graphs and charts, and reading the topic sentences. Now let's get down to the actual reading. When you read a passage to complete a comprehension exercise, you should read it slowly and carefully, all the time asking yourself questions and trying to predict or guess what's going to happen next. This is known as active reading. Active reading is careful reading with a questioning mind. Learners often think that a comprehension is a writing exercise because at school, your teacher gives you a passage to read and you write answers to the questions. It is true that comprehending a text can involve writing, but the most important step is reading. As you read, you must ask yourself questions about the passage you're reading. Questions such as, who is involved? What are they doing? Why are they doing what they are doing? How do I feel about what they are doing? Will help you to focus on the passage and think about the information you are being given. Obviously, the questions you ask yourself may be different to the questions your teacher gives you to answer, but they will still be helpful. They will encourage you to read with an active mind and will help you to understand the passage better. To see how good you are at active reading, it's time for today's task. Look at the following heading and subheading taken from a newspaper article. Black tycoons build rural palaces. Symbols of the wealth of empowerment millionaires tower over the mud huts of their home villages. Now answer the following questions. What do you think the article is going to be about? What do you think the purpose of the article will be? What style of language do you expect the article to use? Remember to practice this surveying text and reading with a questioning mind until this becomes second nature. You'll be glad you did it. In the next lessons, we'll continue to develop our active reading skills, so I'll see you then.